So we're checking out this new device here. What is it? Is it a bird? Nope. Is it a plane? Nope. Well, is it a volume knob or maybe a gaming system button? Nope. It's the new Martin Jerry Dimmer. And yeah, it does have a rotary wheel to it. Let's check it out. None of the manufacturers are sponsoring this video, which is a really good thing. The only ones sponsoring it are viewers like you. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whatever it might be. Leave us a comment down below and we definitely appreciate it. Pretty simple. There's multiple LEDs across and then you have the little rotary wheel. It doesn't really have any clicks to it, but it's not very smooth, which is a good thing. So you can kind of feel that it does move and kind of set in place so you can turn the brightness up and down. So there's this big button in the middle, and this is your power button. Kind of reminds me of the Xbox 360, but hopefully we won't have the red ring of death issues with this one. Is that a little button down here? That's the night light. We will show that once we turn the camera light off. It does turn on a very dim, kind of yellowish green light behind here so you could see the power button. And these LEDs are pretty dim, so you can use them in a bedroom very easily. Down here is the Wi-Fi. That's going to be for when you do the pairing for, say, doing if you're using the stock firmware for the Smart Life app. And then this is just the restart button. It just restarts the whole switch if there's some reason to do that. It's stuck or whatever. That way you don't have to go turn the breaker on and off. So wiring this, which we'll get to when we wire it in the wall. There's the ground. Yes, you will need neutral because it is a smart switch. And there's your live or your input. And then there's your load that goes to the bulbs itself. Now, it does support 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, as well as 150 watts LED, 150 CFL. Most everyone's probably going to be using LED now. And definitely, hopefully, you're not using incandescent unless there's some special use case. Other than that, that's about it. And this is the decor size, so we'll get this installed and we'll check it out. So make sure the power's off. Of course, this one's lit up. It's a different circuit. And the power is off. So on the Martin Jerry volume dimmer, here to power it brown goes to the output and the white is the neutral close the doors you see everything's connected and we'll put our ground back in the wire nut you can do those in wagos too but i don't find a big need to do that so we'll just leave the switch out because i like to test them before i put them back in the box and it just makes it much easier <coughs> turn it on and it fills up pretty simple So once you got it installed, well, if you're going to just use the regular Smart Tuya app, just go ahead and pair it with your phone, call it a day, use it with whatever, whatever app you want to use, just maybe not IFTTT or however they say it. Yeah. Or you can bring it straight in using the Tuya integration into Home Assistant or whatever software you're using if it supports it. But of course, we do want to keep it all local and use it without the cloud. Oh, and if you're not hanging around, hit that subscribe button for us. See you in the next one.
So once you do pop open the switch, it's pretty simple if you did want to flash this, but there is one little step that may cause some people an inconvenience. So this is the back half of the switch. This is all of your mains AC stuff as this other side is the low voltage. Now I did slide out the little ground wire. It just goes in this other hole and then just clips onto the front face plate. It's for to ground your, if you had like a metal face plate on the actual switch or if you did have a metal box, you definitely should always hook up your grounds because you never know when someone's going to change the faceplate. So you can just unplug this if you are wanting to do a third-party flash, such as ESP Home or Tasmoda, whatever you choose. Now there is a little temperature sensor that is attached to one of the MOSFETs, and you can just take a simple Phillips screwdriver and disconnect it if you like. So you will find the normal little TYWE3S module, that's the ESP8266. And you can hit this with either doing soldering or if you want to do the jig, however you want to do it. Now, you, of course, you'll notice this one here, that is the Tuya MCU module. They did happen to break out the pins for us. And don't quote me on this, but I remember this one was ground, RX and TX, or it could be TX and RX, and then 3V3. Now, there is no GPIO0 broken out. I was able to put a breadboard jumper in here, but there was no GPIO0, so we had to use GPI0 actually on the module itself. One other thing is you will have to, because this Tuya MCU is attached to RX and TX, much like with the fan controller we had to do, you do need to hold down this pin here, and we will leave a little schematic up there. You need to hold this to ground the entire time you're doing the flashing. Otherwise, this chip tries to talk to this chip at the same time you're flashing, and it just doesn't work. So once you do the hold that to ground, it power up, and during the entire flash, it lets it flash straight over to put Tasmoto or ESP home. So that's about it for this. There's no other GPIO pins that are attached to the button. This is the brains of everything, the Tuya MCU, just like you'd see on some other Tuya MCU dimmers. So, well, no crazy different little projects with this to control LEDs and whatever else. So it's just going to be like a typical dimmer. So one other thing before I do close this back up, I would like to notate this. I don't like this. This is not the greatest. I could see this material here was supposed to be down here to isolate and prevent these wires from touching each other at some point. Well, it just didn't make the mark. Hopefully, they'll have this corrected in future runs of this dimmer. Now we're going to jump through a bunch of little things real quickly because we figure we are, you've already seen several of my other videos on how to flash Tasmoda and configure it, etc. So we're not going to go into really in-depth detail on this switch. There's many other videos down below and on my channel if you want to really get into some in-depth on flashing and configuring Tasmoda straight from the jump. So it's really easy to configure this with Tasmoda. And of course you can use ESP Home because it does use the Tuya MCU. I just haven't done one like that because I use Tasmoda for all my pre-built switches and plugs, etc. It just makes it easier to deploy, but you're welcome to use whatever you like. So there is no template. So don't jump to and go look for a template. This is built in. Just like many other like the regular Martin Jerry dimmer they use in my fork or the stock Tasmoto uses the built-in module for PWM dimmer. So to do that, go to configuration, then go to configure module. So you may not know this, but all of these modules are built straight into Tasmoto. You don't need to put templates in. See, there's that PWM dimmer. There's many devices such as Sonoff Basic, the Sonoff 4 channel, etc. They're all built straight in the Tasmoto right there for you. No templates needed. This is the way it really used to be. And I know we're used to doing templates. So definitely go down and you're going to look for the Tuya MCU. 
it's number 54, which also you could type module space 54 in the console to set that one. Go ahead and save it. So you're automatically going to see it is going to pull up the toggle. If you did want to test it, it will toggle the light back on and off. And we have shown this process on how to set up a Tuya MCU dimmer in the past, but we'll go over it real quickly here. Yeah, like I know I'm trying to say it real quickly, but that always doesn't happen. I end up tend up rambling and stuff. No. I'm I'm... Shut up, Travis. Um, so one thing we need to do is turn on weblog space four. And that'll allow us to see a lot of different commands and different outputs from the dimmer itself. And one thing right off the bat, you'll notice the heartbeat packets. It sends a command straight to the dimmer and the dimmer talks back. And if yours isn't showing that, you may be running a version of Tasmodo that does not have Tuya MCU. So just run the standard tasmodo.bin file. Make sure you do upgrade to the latest version, by the way. So one thing you do want to set is the Tuya MCU 21.2, because this one has two DPIDs, which is the data point IDs. The relay one is data point one, and this one's a very standard, it's two for the dimmer. So just do Tuya MCU space 21 comma two. That's gonna go ahead and set that dimmer up for you. It's gonna reboot the switch. And if you do go back to the main menu, you will notice you get the slider as well. Now go ahead on the switch itself and set it to full brightness. And you should see this RX dim state is 255. And that's how we need to know to set the dimmer range. And then also if you turn it all the way down, you're gonna see this RX dim state equals one. So that tells us our dimmer range is one to 255. So all you'll do is put dimmer range, all one word, one comma 255. Another command I like to do is LED table zero. And that's going to set where we get a linear scale on the brightness. And typically that's going to be okay for this type of dimmer. If not, you can turn the LED table back on. And that's pretty much it. So lastly, we're going to set in our MQTT. I do like to set a custom topic. That way I can see it pop up on my router as a specific name. We'll go ahead and save that. So configuration. And we're gonna go configure other because I do wanna set the device name. So we'll hit save. And the one last little thing is type in, you can type in set option or you can just do SO19, and that's auto discovery in the Home Assistant. If you wanna configure it manually, hey, go right ahead, but auto discovery, and it works great now. You'll see just two additional lines showing it is throwing out auto discovery. Again, if it's not, you do need to make sure you are running the full bin with auto discovery built in. And we'll go down to configuration, integrations, and look for MQTT devices. And there we are, everything but the kitchen sink. You can see it's on. We'll add it to Lovelace. There it is. You can set the dimming level up and down and turn the entity on and off, as well as if you do go change it on the faceplate itself, it will move this slider by itself. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Throw it straight into Home Assistant. No cloud, no nothing, and it's very super fast given it's just local MQTT. Pretty decent little switch. I'm not so sure I like the look of it compared to some of my other switches. And well, you don't have that very versatile being able to do long press, no short presses and multi presses like you do and do those weird projects like I did on the original Martin Jerry Dimmer, which is Definitely still, hands down, one of my favorite dimmers. They have told me they're gonna do a DIY dimmer, and so hopefully it won't have the MCU, and that way we'll be able to program the buttons and use the dial, or maybe it'll be a totally different dimmer altogether. Just not really sure.
but at least they did listen and they did break out those pins at the top, but they forgot GPIO zero. You need that one. So maybe you can find some use for it. You do like the look of it. Maybe use it as a volume knob with some sort of automation in the home where you turn it up and it turns volume up or does something else really weird. I'm not sure. Just leave us a comment down below. I'd like to see maybe what kind of integration you did with this particular dimmer. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely helps out bringing new videos, projects, hardware, whatever it might be to the channel all the time. Thank you. And yep, hit subscribe. And y'all take care. You out the way? Okay. Get out the way.